Um, thanks for being here, Gary. My pleasure. Um, my one thing that you discussed yesterday was that you, um, you're you not a huge fan of some of the new regulations hitting banks. I think, I think my main point yesterday was that you have to think of a way to do policy evaluation to understand whether these regulations are going to have the effects that you think they're going to have, rather than just adopt them without thinking about that. And that one way you can do this policy evaluation in the case of large changes is by looking at economic history. And there's a number of other papers that do, do similar things, by the way. I mean, maybe a total of five or something. Okay. So it's becoming a way of approaching this problem. And in particular, you're interested in this 19th century U.S. history of uh, banks giving out bank notes, money really coming from banks. So I, I was interested in the national banking era, 1863 to 1914, because that was a period where we had banking crises, but we didn't have a central bank and we didn't have deposit insurance. So it was sort of crises in their pure form and it was sort of easier to sort of understand what was going on. Before the Civil War was also interesting because it was a different form of money. And because the private banknotes didn't trade at par, you, you could begin to understand what the properties were for a medium of exchange that was going to be privately produced to be efficient. And the answer was it has to be something that always trades at par. And for a private entity, a bank, to produce something like that is extremely difficult. Um, either they it trades at a discount or it trades at par most of the time, but then you can have a crisis. So when you talk about money, you think not just of bills and coins. You also include checking deposits. Yeah, I'm, I'm more interested in privately bonds. produced money. I mean, if you, think, if you think about safe assets, throughout most of human history, there's always been a demand for a safe asset. The, 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 the obvious example is a gold coin. Yep. But a gold coin is not a safe asset in the following sense. If I go to your store and I offer you a gold coin, you might say to me, well, wait a minute, this coin has been shaved. It's not really worth a dollar. Mm -hmm. I have to weigh it on my scales. And I say, well, how do I know your scales are accurate? Mm -hmm. So even with a gold coin, we could have trouble transacting. Yes. So it, takes a, it took hundreds and hundreds of years to get to the point where we had fiat money Mm -hmm. that would always trade at par. A so dollar is a dollar. A dollar is a dollar. But before that, it was never the case that a dollar was yeah. a dollar. Right? So, so whether it was publicly produced or privately produced, that took a long time. And that evolution tells you a lot about what the theoretical properties are of what you need for that to happen. Yeah. Great. OK. Thank you very much. Yeah, great. That was easy. All right.